Hello, I'm Robin Henning, and welcome to another Exchange Life Nugget of Truth. You know, the Lord has really had me focus on this concept of resting in Him lately. So I wanted to share some of what He's been sharing with me with you. Now, first thing, the ultimate example of rest in the Bible is the Lord Jesus Himself. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, we are told that while he was on trial before the religious leaders, before Pilate, before Herod, he didn't defend himself. But rather, he kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. He knew that the only courtroom that mattered was the heavenly courtroom, the one that his father was seated on the throne and judging righteously from. He knew. He knew that he could entrust himself to the only judge that mattered. Now, that word in trust is a word of rest. When I illustrate this with my clients in the office, I point out to them that they're doing absolutely nothing to stay seated in the chair that they occupy. And they think about that. You're right. I'm not thinking about staying seated in the chair. They don't have to work or think about staying seated. They have entrusted themselves to the chair and they're resting in it. Why? Because they've been in my office more than once and there's never been a point in time when that chair broke. And guess what? Jesus is a lot more faithful than a stinking chair. Beloved, we don't have to work at attaining or maintaining the position that we are in Christ. Why? Because we're in Him by virtue of the shed blood of the Lamb and our faith in Him. He's given us that position of rest, a position of authority already because we are in Him. He is seated at the right hand of the Father in a position of rest and authority. Guess what? We're in Him. Therefore, we are seated in that position too. How do we experience that? Ah, oh, by faith, beloved, because guess what? Jesus calls to us. He says, look, Come to me, all who are what? Weary and heavy laden. Tired. When you're tired, what do you want to do? Sit down. Heavy laden, what do you want to do? Unburden yourself. You want to drop your burden, right? So Jesus is saying, come to me, take a seat, hand over your burdens. I'm going to give you in exchange for your burdens, rest. Rest for your weary souls. And again, what hinders us from that experience is one thing, beloved. It's unbelief. The author of Hebrews, in chapter 4, elaborates on God's rest, how it works, how we get there, and what keeps us from it. I encourage you to read the whole letter. The whole chapter, especially. Chapter 4 of Hebrews. But faith, as it turns out, is that key to resting in Him. It takes faith to sit in the chair. You trust that the chair is going to hold you up, so you sit down and it's faith. God is, like I said earlier, more faithful than any chair, beloved. Unbelief is what robs us of that rest in Him. Instead of resting, we find ourselves striving, or worse yet, wrestling with God. Do not wrestle with God. How did that work for Jacob? It didn't, okay? We get that scene. He's coming back from a whole life of trying to wrestle the blessing from God, his whole life up to this point. He's been with Laban, and he's been conniving and wrestling, and you know, and, and even before he leaves on his way to Laban, he says, look, if you do this, this, and this, you'll be my God. He's the one in control, calling the shots, naming the terms and conditions. Off he goes to Uncle Laban, who's a worse conniver and trickster than he is. That's pretty hard to imagine. So he spends years and years of being uh, tricked by Laban and counter moves and moves, chess game moves, and, and finally, you know, the Lord tells Jacob, hey, pack up and go home. Head out to see your brother Esau. Oh, that's going to go well, don't you think? So, you know, he spends a night, he sends the, the wife and kids ahead, noble guy that he is, and he wrestles, he encounters the angel of the Lord, which is a pre-incarnate Christ. He wrestles all night, all night. The very thing Jesus was trying to do, this typified his whole life. Jacob wanted God to bless him, but he wanted it on his terms. 
He didn't believe that God loved him. He didn't believe that God was faithful. He wanted to dictate. He wanted to be God. Beloved, as a position of pride, it wasn't until God humbled him and taught him, well, not teach, but forced him by putting his hip out. That had to hurt a lot. He didn't want to put pain into his life. He did not want to do that. He waited all night. This was, a t this was an illustration of his whole life. If you just cling to me, Jacob, if you just rest, if you just depend on me, the blessings are going to pour out. And so his hip displacement was something you remember the rest of his life because he had to walk with a crutch. And the Jews didn't eat the meat around the hip socket as a memorial to what had happened to him. But that day he was changed forever, even his name. His name goes from being Jacob, the heel catcher, the deceiver, the one who trips someone up, to Israel, prince of God. Joseph, the one who was raised under Israel, different guy than his brothers. His brothers had picked up Jacob's flesh. Israel, Jacob, uh, Joseph, excuse me, did not. Joseph was a man who really walked in faith because he saw faith lived out in his dad, Israel. Different man. So beloved, ask the Lord, where are you striving instead of resting? Ask the Lord, what lie are you believing against his character that's keeping you from entering into his rest? Then ask the Lord, what would you give me in exchange for this lie? Whatever he shows you, write it down. And then go through a prayer like this. Lord, I confess, I believe this lie against you. Name it. Lord, I renounce that lie. I ask you to reclaim the ground I gave to the enemy through believing that lie. I choose by faith to receive the truth that he speaks into you. And Lord, thank you. I choose to partner with this. I unpartner with the lie. I partner with your truth. When you do that, you're going to enter into his rest. You're going to experience it in a very real way that circumstances can't touch. No matter how high the waves are or the storm, you'll be focused on resting, resting in Him. That's where He is. That's where we are. So, beloved, I hope this encourages you. I hope you have a fantastic week of resting in Jesus. We'll see you next time.